This tutorial looks at how to create a glow effect uh, in Houdini using compositing. The scenario we have is a neon sign saying Houdini and I've created a room around it and a pillar which is going to obscure part of the sign. I've also created a camera and a light and I've animated the camera for the first 30 frames so that it pans across the scene as you can see. I've done this to add some complexity to the scene since the pillar passing in front of the sign is going to obscure it and we're going to need to account for that in the compositing. The first thing we need to do is create a bounding object around the sign that we're going to use as a dummy in the compositing. So I'm going to s select the sign and then use the extract tool uh, to get another node with a copy of the sign. I'm going to rename this geometry node uh, bounds and let's go inside. As we can see the extract tool has created an object merge node which essentially fetches the object from the sign node and I want to create a bounding box around the sign. If I right click on the output of the object merge and lay down a bounds node that's exactly what this node does. It creates a bounding box. I want to expand it a little on the top and the bottom to allow space for the glow to be a bit bigger than our sign. This pretty much sets up the scene. We now need to create three different renders. One that renders everything, one that renders just the sign, uh, and from this one we'll just be using the alpha channel, and one with our bounding box, but with a matte shader applied to everything else. And I'll explain what a matte shader is shortly. We can control which objects are rendered on the mantra node itself, but to change the shaders applied to objects we need to create a special take. I'll add a take list to the main panel and then add a new take which I'm going to call matte take. A take is just a way to store a variation on the scene within the scene itself. So here we're taking the scene which has various materials applied to the objects and we're creating a variation where most of those objects have a matte shader. We can then switch to using this variation rather than the main scene when we render. Before we select that take I'm going to go into the shop network and lay down a material node. I need to go inside and lay down a VIX matte material and connect this to the sub output. I'm then going to rename my material matte. So going back to our take list, um, let's go into the matte take and then let's select all the objects apart from the bounding box. Then we need to go into the Material tab uh, of these objects, right-click the Material parameter and include this in the Take. Now select the matte material we just laid down. As we can see the Take window now shows on the right-hand side the material parameters of all the nodes we just selected. This, show, this is confirming that those parameters are different uh, in the matte Take from the main Take. Now let's set up our render nodes. If we go into the out network and lay down a mantra node, which we will call mantra normal. By the way, we want to make sure we're back in the main take, or otherwise things will get confusing. We can do that using the drop down box at the top of the window here. Let's fire off a render and see what it looks like. Well, we have the bounding box visible, which we definitely don't want. So going back to our mantra node on the Objects tab, we want to go to Exclude Objects, click
pick the selector and choose our bounding box. It now won't be rendered. There's still something odd about this render, which is that our neon sign is casting a shadow. We can prevent it casting a shadow using the light linking pane. Let's add one. Now if we select uh, light and change the link type to shadows, uh, this gives us a list of all of the objects which are casting shadows for this light. We just need to deselect the sign object. Let's try rendering again. That's better. Now that we're happy with this render, we can set it to output every frame of the 30 frame sequence. In the Properties uh, Output tab, we can click on the selector and choose where to put our renders. In this case, I'll just put them in the hip directory and label them normal.f3.pick. The $f3, by the way, is just converted into the frame number, giving each frame a different title. The 3 means that uh, it's expanded to 3 digit. So the first frame is normal dot zero zero one dot pick and so on. I'll also need to change the settings at the top to render frames 1 to 30. Next let's set up the render which just renders the sign. We lay down, an lay down another mantra node and call it mantra sign. In the Objects tab, uh, click the selector to select the Sign object. Quick word on what these three parameters mean. The first, Candidate Objects, a list is a list of all the objects that might be rendered in the scene. It can contain wildcards, and normally it just contains a star which matches all the objects in the scene. The next field is force objects. The objects listed here are included in the render even if their visibility flags are turned off. Finally, there are excluded objects, which list objects excluded from the render even if they match the pattern in the candidate objects field. So here, because the sign is the only candidate object, that's all that's going to be rendered. Let's do a test render. That looks fine. So let's change this node to render frames 1 to 30 and also change where it puts the output file. I'll put the output file in the hip directory and call it sign.f3.pick. Finally I need my mat render. Let's lay down another render node and call it Mantra Mat. For this one, we will need to change the take that it uses to render. And we can do this using the drop down menu here. Let's choose Mat Take. What we're doing here is making this render node render using the mat variation. In other words, with most of the objects using a mat shader. Let's try that. What we're interested in here is the alpha channel rather than the render itself. And we can see the alpha channel by clicking this button on the viewer. What we're seeing here is the bounding box with uh, the pillar interrupting it. Now at frame 1, uh, the pillar is not obscuring the bounding box. Let's move to frame 20 and render again. Here we can see the pillar is actually obscuring part of the box, and this is showing up as a gap in the alpha channel. That's what the matte material does. It hides everything behind it and sets the alpha channel to zero, and this is very useful in compositing, as we'll see. Let's set this node to render frames 1 to 30.
and make the output mat.f3.pig. We're going to need all three of these sequence, sequences of frames to make our glow. If we link the output of each mantra node to the next, the effect is to ensure that when we render the last node, all the nodes are rendered. So let's render the last node and pause the video while the frames are rendered out.